Now the next step on our project, it's evolved into something relatively simple. I have three basic patterns that I made the other day. Painted them, looked at them on the motorcycle itself, went back and forth with a lot of different trim, what I thought was going to look good. Some of it looked terrible. See, here's my whole, the, the original point. What looks good on a, on a picture, especially a picture that you're at a, a strange angle on. This may look good on a, on a, when you're looking from two feet off the ground, but then as you stand up, it doesn't look right. So I wound up with this thinking, well, I need to move to the next level here. Now, what I always do, I, I had taken Karen shopping. We went to a craft store. She bought some craft stuff. And I just happened to be wandering around aimlessly, like, uh, you know, looking, looking for the lost Holy Grail or something. But here, what I found, and I stumbled right upon this, and I said, whoa, is this going to make my day complete? This is what amounts to be, I'll read the name, Oracle Shelf Paper. And it's got a sticky back. And it's not exactly the color gold I want, but it's very, very close. Now, I also, while I'm there, I said, well, let me look at what else they have. I went to another part of the store where they had pieces of just ordinary paper. And they had a different color gold. So I thought, well, because I'm going to be mixing gold paint, and I might want to make my patterns out of two different colors of gold and see do I want a more silvery gold, or you can see they're two different colors, a more yellow gold, since it's a critical part of the motorcycle. But here's the really good news. That doesn't matter which one I use or if I use both. What happens with this, and I originally thought I was going to be a genius and I'd figure this out. The patterns I made from ordinary art paper, that yellow art paper, I can trace them onto the back of this, cut them out. And this, because this is sticky back paper, I can stick them right in place. Now, I originally thought I'd buy rubber cement. And just before I go to take the motorcycle apart, I would put them in position finalize the position and then take a real close picture of each one measure how far this is from here how far from how far whatever i'd make a little template of each pattern but what what this is going to allow me to do is just peel the back off and stick them in place and i was thinking how cool is this i, got, I could probably actually ride the motorcycle with this stuck to it so this will give me something to experiment with for the next couple days but Here's the main thing is, Karen, because Karen takes art lessons from two different places, she's very involved in art, and she's, she's actually, I think she's pretty good. But I'm a little prejudiced, just a little. She actually thinks I know how to customize motorcycles, too. She thinks I'm Chip Foose's long-lost brother, but Chip Foose doesn't agree with that. Anyway, I want to show you one of the things she made at her art class, because it's something... It has nothing to do with motorcycles, but it's worth 30 seconds to see something that I found very interesting when she showed it to me. And this is actually a picture she made, and it's a technique that her art instructor showed her called poor painting. And it's really pretty uh, unique, and what happened is she showed it to me on, there's YouTube videos, you look up poor painting, and there's, it's really, really unique and cool. Now, if I had a Harley... Or if I had a, uh, a bike that I wanted to make some kind of really uh, custom paint job, this, <laughs> I might be thinking about how to do that and then coat it with about five coats of clear. But that, I think that's pretty cool for a piece of artwork. And we will be hanging this up and Karen has an art museum in the house, of course. So here is some information worth sharing and it's worth knowing. Anytime you're going to do silver or gold or any metallic color, a metallic color has a property that's very different than, let's just use the back of this, which is white. For white, what happens when you have, and this has a, a, a clear plastic on it, it's not that shiny, but when you have a white color, the object that you're trying to envision, how it's going to look, and it's a metallic color, it can look totally different. It looks totally different here, just as an example. This is the gold pigment. Watch what happens with gold pigment. With gold pigment, it's really only gold right here in the center. As it goes off to the side, it changes radically what color it is. Now, same with the silver. So whenever you take into account part of your paint job is going to be a metallic, whether it's blue or yellow, or it could be, uh, you know, at the color that the green ninja is. But there's going to be a very big difference between how that object, gas tank, fuel tank, the whole motorcycle, if you paint it all white, it's going to look larger.
Paint it black, it's going to look smaller. Paint it flat black, it's going to kind of fade away and disappear. Paint it gloss black, it's going to jump out at you like a spotlight. So one of the choices, and this is a thing we're probably going to do, and maybe we're even going to do it today if time presents itself, is I want to come up with a lot of different colors of gold. I'm going to mix my own gold. I've done that before many, many times. In fact, one of the very popular colors that they use in model aviation is called B25 Brodak Silver. That was my personal color that I made for my model Spitfire. And then Randolph produced it for Brodak. It's, it's one of the colors on their color chart. Now, one of the things, though, is if you notice this, I'm going to show this up close. These bigger flake colors, like metal flake would be, you'll see a boat that's all metal flake already, the old-fashioned helmets where they were metal flake. They reflect the light totally different than when the pigment gets smaller. In fact, when pigment gets this small, it's got pearl in it, which it's almost, in fact, some of the pigments that you use in mixing dope, they're actually not even pigments, they're paste. They almost look like peanut butter. So if you let a, if you let a, a thing of gold Brodak dope dry, you notice at the bottom of it, it's, it's peanut butter. Well, that's, that's the way this works. But notice this, this is the thing I wanted to show. If you use a smaller pigment, now granted, not many people would really even realize how this works, or care. And the only reason I'm doing it is just to share information. But when you have a color that you want to have, this is going to be the trim color, and it's going to be on a flat part, a flat fairing piece, it's going to show like that. If I take the same thing and go around a corner, it's only going to show where the light is hitting it. So it's something else I wanted to take into account in coming up with the paint job. I wanted to only wanted to have where it's going to be gold, except for the wheels, to be on basically flat surfaces. And that would mean that we're going to see the, the maximum gold in the color, as opposed to if you looked on the side, it's going to look a very different color. Now, I just wanted to show this is one way. And I, let, me, let me backtrack a little bit. I don't want to leave any steps out. These are the original things we made out of ordinary craft paper. Of course, they're, they get all wobbly and everything. All wonky, I should say. And now I want to make good copies. I want to make copies that I can basically for lack of a better word, glue onto the motorcycle and see it in real life. So this is a modeling uh, trick that I've used in the past. You can put a pin. This is a cutting pad. Let me just show this. Sometimes I leave steps out here. This is a soft cutting pad that you can buy at any hobby shop. It's called an XL cutting pad. The little piece of trim that we want to use or actually any shape that you want to replicate now, to, to do this, here's what would happen if you don't use pins. You put this down, and and as you're doing it, it moves, and you got to have hands, you need helpers, and the mouse comes out and runs along the ruler. If you have a pin, it just makes it a lot easier. So what I do, holding this down, put one pin up here, one pin down here. It's pretty easy to figure out after a while. One pin down here. And then we got to find the last piece of this. And we can make multiples of these patterns if we wanted to. Or at least we just have one accurate one. Now, of course, and by the way, this is a, the handy thing. I just found out they had, I bought them a while back. <laughs> they were giving them away at Harbor Freight. If you, I don't know, if you had a coupon, you could get one of these. Or maybe the guy just gave it to me, felt sorry for me. I looked homeless or something. So with this ruler in place now, now I can just score. Right at the very end, I can take the pin out. Right now I can score here. And right here, I can basically get right down to the nitty gritty here. Now, if the pin comes out like that just did, no big deal because the part hasn't moved. And again, what this, what this now I don't need this pin anymore. What this allows me to do is get some really nice, nice straight cuts to make a, a really, a really good pattern.
Now any spot that I haven't, I just didn't go all the way up to the pan. That's okay too, because we're just going to use these. The idea is now I can use this. I could actually, and a way to do this, by the way, is to just put some Windex on the back of this and it'll stick while you can take a picture of it or measure it or whatever. In fact, I got a rough edge here. But we do have a nice rendition. Now, what this is nice for, if it's going to go around a curve, because I'd be able to see if I like this color. And by the way, here's another thing. If I, if I hadn't decided I wanted black and gold, I would make one red, one blue, one yellow, and say, how do I like to trim in blue, in black? Or if I want to do multiples, let's say I had two of these, and put one there, and then the white one on top, and the green, you know, and it, this allows you to have a lot of flexibility when you plan a custom paint job. So little by little, we're making an assortment of these little parts that we can then go out to the, to the shop and paste them on a motorcycle and see how we're going to like the color. We got a darker gold, a lighter gold, and maybe we'll like the lighter gold. Maybe we'll like the darker gold, we, but you never know until we actually paint the wheels how we're really going to like, because the wheels are going to be so dominant in this motorcycle. So the next step is I want to run out to the garage and I want to see how these are going to look. I made an extra one and I want to see if I, any, any, you know, any ideas come along as I'm doing this. Now it might seem like all of this is a lot of overkill just for a simple thing, but when it's wrong, it, it's wonky. When it's right, when you do get it right and everything's in the right proportion and the right color, it really does look a lot better. So I'm just putting a really light coating on this so I can put it in position and see what this is going to look like. This is, of course, the test. See what happens, it curls up, so you really have to get a little bit of glue on the edge here. And then when I'm all done, I'll have to get that just compound off whatever glue stays on there. Just, just a slight little bit of glue is all you need. Even better, if I had some rubber cement, I thought I did, but I don't. So you know what this does, it gives me a real ability to see what that would look like with that color gold. Now we have two, I'm going to do this whole exercise twice, I'll no sense putting it on video twice, but I got the, this is the more, the bigger flake, it almost looks like metal flake, paper. And what this is allowing me to do, and then the other one I have is shelf paper, I think that has sticky back already, but I can really see what this is going to look like. And then I will take plenty of pictures, of course, and then when I do lay this out, I can lay it right, I can put the pattern on and just lay the tape right around it. So looking at it from this angle, here's the only problem I've run into. When I lay this piece out, as soon as it hits this curve, you see there's a curve here, it starts to look distorted. So I'm going to have to make, I'll go downstairs and I'll make a brand new pattern and make this just a little bit shorter. By maybe uh, oh, an inch shorter. I can just cut, cut the angle off the back of this and it'll look more in keeping. See this, well here's the problem too, this starts to look too long. I uh, don't want to make that one any bigger. I like the look of that one. And I've got to get the line, the line for the bottom perfectly parallel. But see, this is the kind of problem you run into. It's like, and I've always explained this to people, that if you're putting trim on a flat surface, when you put a flat surface, well, that's fine. That's like drawing a map of the earth. Everything's flat. As soon as you make a globe, you draw the equator, and then as you turn the globe, the equator is a, is a curve. Now, that's a phenomenon that I ran into. <laughs> well, I tried to work around it, but the, the globe won. But anyway, this one, I, now see, right away I realized I can't go past this piece without having this curve up. So that then becomes an issue. And that's the beauty of doing this with... I can mix and match, and this will come right off with a little bit of wax or compound, but have, being able to do this all without painting trim. Now, had I painted that on, it would look great while it's sitting on a bench flat, but then as soon as you stand up, or a lot of times you're, you're looking at something in this angle, which is too low. This is the part you see when you normally stand and look at a motorcycle. You're about, you know, depending on how tall you are, but I want it to look good from this height. Not from being a worm or in a manhole cover, I want it to look here. So this piece is going to get modified and then we'll see how we like the new piece. 
and I like that proportion a little bit better. See, it's just a little bit high here. I can trim that back, maybe a 64th of an inch. I'll make a final adjustment to this pattern, of course. But I do like the proportion. And see, what I want to do is I want to keep this. I'm trying to keep this that I don't have a lot of gold on here. Now, the only thing left, I don't know what about the writing anything down here or putting any kind of uh, design or anything. That's that's yet to be proven. And I'm not even going to work about work or even think about that today because what I'm trying to do is just get this roughed out in my mind and look at it from a lot of different angles. Okay, with that trim, now I've got a real good look at each one of these. This one, I think, <clears throat> to be honest, that one's pretty close to how I'd really want it in the very end. This one, not so sure about. And I do like the way that proportions up in the back. Again, what I'm trying to make it is to be subtle, not overpowering. But again, what's, this is going to allow me to go back and forth, back and forth a million times. See, this is what I like about using this method. I can look at how that would look. Is that something I like? I'll get Karen's feedback, or if anybody else pops by the shop here, you never know who's going to just flip-flop by. But it gives me a lot of ideas, and I've got probably um, way more than a month to think about this. And to be honest, I like it better with the single piece. That just, uh, you know, that looks like too much gold. And that's the beauty of doing this, is you can just, with just one drop of contact cement. Now, part of what I wanted to do is I, I'm trying to keep this very subtle, because what's going to happen with the wheels gold, the whole look of this motorcycle is going to change. And I want to accent the titanium, the polished pipes, and among other things that I had thought about, and... Keeping it simple, now I've got to take into account, I don't have the piece here, but the logo is going to be somewhere on here. So I think I don't want to, at this point in time, I don't want to have Karen come out and look at it, but I don't want to get, I'd read, see, there's a golden rule too. When you're doing these kind of things, if you have one not enough or one color not enough, everything is okay. When you go one too many or if you put one something too many, one too many is, wor is way worse than one not enough. And I really do kind of like that. That's kind of the look I'm looking for. I'm not sure how other people feel, but I think we're getting into the area where, well, I got to think about it. See, it's always, it's always that thing of one not enough, better than, well, anyway. What happened is I do like this one up here. And I'm not, maybe I could flip-flop them and put the 650 logo down here. I don't know. I think that's worth a look. And just a little bit of compound or wax. Just take that residual glue off. Now I can look at it with the piece higher. Now see, I've got to be careful. This is going around. This is going around a curve here. I got to make sure that from some angles I don't. Although that doesn't look too bad. I, to tell you the truth, I like it better up there now that I've moved it around. But see, the whole purpose of the video is to say this, this allows you to play a game called Paper Dolls. Now, in designing a model plane that I used to make designs on paper and sketches, and, but, but this really allows you a lot of choices. Now, what this is going to allow me to do, and I think this is going to be the, the thing of choice, is to put the big 650 logo down here. I think that's going to be a, a lot better. I'm going to go make up what I think is going to be a fake 650 logo just to see what it looks like. Now these are just fake little things I made from the scrap. And when John and I, John Poth here, and I sit down and we do this with computer, he does it and I just watch. The, we, he has this lettering already in his computer so we can make it bigger, wider, thinner. We can add a band, a, a border, but the one thing we can't do is print it gold. So what I have to do is make this shape in gold, and then we'll put the black letters on it. So, But that's relatively easy to do. So as we've gone through a bunch of trim, a bunch of changes, I just want to see what this is going to look like, because this is going to be a long day. And of course, the final badge, when it gets done, it'll be a whole different thing. I just want to see. I have to I have to carry that little bit of an angle from the seat down 
can't make it totally parallel. <clears throat> the way this evolved, I really like this a lot better than the one on the side, and I like having a badge on the side. So that kind of, kind of one on both ends of that. So I'm just looking at the badging before this day ends because this has been a long day. But I really feel like I've moved the football a little bit forward. As my good friend John Cafaro, who is a major car designer, used to tell me all the time, Badging is very important in the design. Well, he's right. Just changing that badging. And we're just going to see what John and I can come up with. That's for sure. So little by little, our project is shaping up. we got plenty of extra things to uh, look at and, and swap and change. And we've got plenty of time still to do it. What is, what is important is being able to change it, look at it, and in my case, have other people look at it, especially Karen, and say, because we, I have a look in my mind, and sometimes you, you don't exactly get it. You really have to work at it. And today was a long day of working on it. And one, now that I have these patterns, I'm going to make totally permanent patterns for everything. And, of course, that might change right up to the very last minute, but, but maybe it won't change. So it's at least we've gotten this far. Because very soon it's going to be time to take the motorcycle apart. And once it's apart, it's hard to line all this stuff up. So I want to have this just the way I have it in the similar color. It's not the exact gold. Maybe tomorrow we'll start mixing paint. But it was a fine going to Michael's and finding this gold paper made this a little bit easier instead of painting paper. And I'm excited about paint, mixing up the paint soon and seeing how this is going to start to look. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. And we're going to be doing a full restoration on this guy. He's going to be 11 years old by the time we take him apart. And thanks for watching.